Dr. Huggins, when we talked to him, talked about the connection between uh, heart disease and root canals. When we're talking about infections that get in the body, are there other potential conditions that might stem from root canal procedures? Yes. Uh, the reason why we're talking so much about the heart here and why they have the picture of the heart on the book is in the past few years, especially since Dr. Kulatz and I wrote our first book about this in 2002, we now have the smoking gun evidence, like I just described to you about the high concentration of pathogens and toxins in the blood clot that causes a heart attack. So I feel we can be very definitive now in making the statement that the evidence clearly shows now root canals cause heart attacks. What we also know by a large body of evidence, but not with the degree of proof that we have for the heart disease, is the fact that the root canals, in addition to going into, lymph into the venous system and making its way to the heart, it also shares lymphatic drainage with the breasts. And in point of fact, I hope we can get the study done someday where we could do the same sort of analysis of cancerous lumps as we've been able to analy analyze blood clots. But I'm quite comfortable we'll see the same profile of pathogens present uh, in the areas where breast cancer evolves. And in point of fact, and we've had a large amount of uh, ladies go through this, there's a very, very high incidence of root canals in patients with breast cancer and other dental infections. I mean, anything that can seed an infection can cause it. It's just the root canal is the most effective at doing it because it allows a nonstop prolif proliferation while having the perfect delivery system, okay? You can have an infection somewhere and if you're not chewing on it or subjecting it to pressure and it doesn't have direct access to lymphatics or veins, it might cause little or no problem. But on the other hand, what is triggered to just push things in wherever you want them, it's a different story. Back in the 1950s, Dr. Joseph Issels in Germany had a clinic in which he treated advanced metastatic cancer patients. And these cancer patients had already gone through the mill, been given up on by their docs, but Dr. Issels had a reputation for getting phenomenal results. Uh, he always checked the mouth and he found in this patient population, now this is 1950, I would say less than 10, 5% of the general population had root canals back then, okay. Back at a time when the root canal incidence was so low, he found that 97% of these metastatic advanced cancer patients that came to him had root canals or other infected teeth. So again, is that proof? That's not proof, but it's pretty hard to legitimately stand back and say, well, uh, there must be something else going on here because that doesn't prove the root canal is causing the cancer. Well, in the sense of traditional statistics, no, it's not direct proof but it defies all logic and sane thinking, in my opinion, to conclude otherwise. Mm -hmm. The other thing that Lissels did, I might add, and this is also a source of focal infection, it can see the coronary arteries when root canals are not an issue, are chronically infected tonsils. Mm -hmm. Dr. Issels, and I'm not recommending this necessarily, but it's something for anybody watching this, any physician to keep in mind when you have the difficult patient that's not responding, Dr. Issels also routinely took out the tonsils. And he commented that almost all the time the tonsils looked normal, but when they came out, they were grossly infected. And what happens is when you have a root canal just continuing to past the toxins. The, the tonsil is designed as a low-level protector against infection. It's not ready to deal with the huge amount of pathogens and toxins that just continually come down from, from a root canal. So I would tell you that most people, even when they have their root canals taken out, 
If they had tonsils when they had the root canals, those tonsils are going to be chronically infected. And I might add from a personal experience, I almost had a heart attack myself. Uh, it, I think it's outlined in the book. I almost had a heart attack myself because I had a root canal taken out 20 years ago. And everything was fine. I never had tonsillitis in my life, but I started getting chest pain. I'm a cardiologist. I pretty much knew what was going on. My C-reactive protein was high. All these things indicated an infection was present somewhere in my body, but I didn't have any idea where. And solely on the basis of what I just told you about Dr. Issels and his work, I got on the phone with an ENT doctor, lied my brains out and said, I'm tired of having tonsillitis. They're settled down now. Get them out. I don't want to deal with it again. He said, okay, whatever you want. And I went ahead, he examined, he said, they look pretty good. They're a little bit enlarged maybe, but they look pretty good. I said, you just, just get them out. It'll help me breathe better. Well, I got them taken out and after the surgery, let's say it was an understatement to say the surgeon was a little bit stunned. He said, Tom, Dr. Levy, he said, I just want you to know that uh, when I put the forceps on that first tonsil to to get it out of the way, to, to be uh, taken out, he said pus started coming out of it. So that resolved my chest pain syndrome. About six months later, I had an angiogram and showed everything was clear, but I have little doubts for myself that had I not done something as crazy as a tonsillectomy for no reason at all, I would have gone on and had my heart attack.